Are you tired of plugging your ESP32 device to your laptop or even changing a single line of code? What if your project is already sealed in an enclosure or installed somewhere hard to reach? In this video, I am going to show you how to free yourself from the cable and update your ESP32 completely in a wireless way. That too, right from your favorite Arduino IDE. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharna. Let's get started with the tutorial. First of all, let's see what is OTA. OTA stands for over the air. This refers to updates that are sent wirelessly to send an updated code to devices like ESP32, eliminating the need for physical cable connection for future uploads after initial setup. This is just like a software upgrade or update that you will receive on your mobile. Now let's see the Arduino IDE. For the OTA, ESP32 by default provides you an example. So go to files, example, under example for ESP32, under Arduino OTA, you can find basic OTA. So this is the basic OTA program. So you have to enter your SSID and password of your Wi-Fi. Let me explain you the basics of what are the different libraries that we are going to use. So first one is Wi-Fi to connect to your Wi-Fi and next one is MDNS. So MDNS is a multicast DNS. It allows ESP32 to announce itself on the network like the name that we give. This is how Arduino IDE can automatically discover your ESP32 under the network ports that I will be showing in the future. So you don't have to manually type the IP address. And then we have this OTA. So this is the important library to send and work with the OTA updates. So this is under the void setup, you have this basic code which will connect to your Wi-Fi. If it is not able to connect, it will restart. And next, we have some of the defaults like the port which you want to set and the host name if you want to set. So I can use this to set my host name as my ESP32, otherwise it will give a default name with the MAC address. Next, if you want to set the password to admin, you can set this. So if you don't set this, you can simply type anything on whenever it is asking. So it will accept as a password. There is another way that you can also set MD5 as a password hash. Another default code that you will find under Arduino OTA dot on start, on end, on progress, on error. These are some kind of callbacks and event based callbacks we can see. So whenever specific events like if it is starting, the OTA is getting started, it will start this program and print this. And if it is ending, then it will print this. So like that. So you don't have to worry about this. And this is the main function that will start the OTA service. And then we are printing the Wi-Fi. And finally in the loop, you can see OTA.handle. So this is the line that keeps OTA service running always. On every cycle of the loop, this function checks if the computer on the network is trying to send an update. If it detects an incoming connection, it manages the entire update process. For the first time, you need to connect your ESP32 with a wire that is USB to your computer to upload this code. But in the subsequent codes, you can use wireless way. Now I have connected my ESP32 with the wireless mode, you can see the symbol on the left side, if it is USB, if it will show like this. So I'm using COM3 and this one. And next thing is click on upload. So this is right now uploading. Once this is uploaded, we can see something on the serial monitor that what is the IP address, whether it is booted or connected to the Wi-Fi or not. So now we can see it is connected to the Wi-Fi which means that it is working. Now what we can do is we can disconnect the power supply from the computer. Instead of using the USB connection from the laptop, I am using the power bank. So with the power bank, I have connected to the ESP32 and now you can see it is powered on. So after this, we have to send a subsequent code. So for the second code, what I'll do is I'll just add few lines of code on top of OTA code. So this is my another code where I'll show you what exactly 
the additional things that I have added. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to blink the LED which is inbuilt on the ESP32 that is on GPIO 2 pin and then every one second I'm going to blink it. So first I'm setting it low and then making the LED pin as output. Next in the loop you can see this code which is non-blocking LED blink logic so that you can see every one second I'm going to make it high and low so that it will be blinking. Now to upload this onto my ESP32 that is wirelessly. So on the top you can see the USB symbol has gone and the wireless symbol has come and with the IP address because of MDNS you can see this is appearing on your Arduino IDE. So if you see like this ESP32 dev module you need to select and then the port that is available click on OK. For example if it is not appearing on your Arduino IDE for the first time you can restart Arduino IDE and then you can find it. And the important thing that you need to do on the subsequent updates the first time you have done normally but in the second time what you need to do is you need to make sure this Arduino OTA begin handle and the important code of this including this Arduino OTA should be available. If we don't include this in this update then in the next subsequent update you might not be able to use the OTA. So now what I'll do is I'll click on this upload button and because I have used admin to be set I'm using admin. If you have not set anything you can simply type any letter or word it doesn't matter and click on upload. Now we can see it is trying to upload wirelessly. Now you can see done and also immediately on the ESP32 board you can find that your LED is blinking every one second. This is how simple you can use OTA updates on your ESP32 using Arduino IDE. And there is a limitation that you cannot use serial monitor for this network port. So you need to keep in mind that you cannot debug when you are using this OTA with the network port. This Arduino basic OTA is good for people who are technical and want to use Arduino IDE to upload the code. But if you want your team members or non-technical persons to do the OTA, then there is another user-friendly library available which provides a user interface for the user to upload the code. So in the next video, I'll be showing you a tutorial to work on that. So subscribe and hit bell icon if you haven't done already to get notified on the new video. If you found this video informative, please type helpful and smash that like button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in another interesting video.